Okay, we have this definition in our pocket for the antiderivative. Let's talk about the notation that we use for antiderivatives. So the process that we're going to use to find antiderivatives is called antidifferentiation or sometimes integration, indefinite integration. And so we have, we're going to introduce in the notation of an indefinite integral. And so, so the indefinite integral, the integral of little f of x dx is equal to big F of x plus c. This means that big F of x prime is equal to little f of x. It means that big F of x is an antiderivative for little f of x. So uh, some, some notation here, some comments here. So this is basically the same notation that we were using for our definite integrals in the previous section. So here's an example of it. Of course, the difference here is that we had the bounds, the limits of integration. Here we don't have, it, have that. We still have an integrand. Now we have a constant of integration. But uh, one big difference should be observed here about the, about the outputs we get from indefinite and definite integrals. Here, our answer is a function. Before, our answers were particular numbers. You should have got a specific number as the answer to, to these questions here. So in, definite integrals give you numbers. Indefinite integrals give you functions. Okay, so just to use the stuff that we've done so far, the uh, indefinite integral of x squared dx is one third x cubed plus c. So that summarizes, so we already talked about this before here. So using this indefinite integral uh, notation, we can just write this down. Now, as it turns out, uh, this example here, the integral, the indefinite integral of x squared dx is one third x cubed plus c. This is a particular example of the power rule for integrals. So here's this theorem. If we integrate x to the n dx, indefinite integral is going to be 1 over n plus 1, x raised to the n plus 1 power, plus our constant of integration. And this formula, this rule, works for all n that's not equal to minus 1. Now, there's a theorem here, but I'll just point out that this has a very, very simple proof. Why is that? If we take the derivative of 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 plus c, if we take the derivative of the right side, we get n plus 1, bring down the exponent, times 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 minus 1, the derivative of c is 0. And so, cancel, cancel, cancel there. Sure enough, we end up with x to the n. So, the power rule for integrals, we basically just, just obtain this by reversing the power rule for derivatives. So, as a quick example of that, what's the indefinite integral of x to the 17th dx? Well, we increase the exponent by 1. x to the 17 goes to x to the 18. We divide by the new exponent. Uh, we divide by 18 plus a constant. And we can check here that if we, if we uh, take the derivative of this, we bring down the 18. Those cancel, and we're just left with x to the 17th, which is what we started with. Uh, I'll also point out here that this is an example of doing this for a positive integer power. Uh, we can also have this for negative integer powers. 
So the antiderivative x and y7 dx is, so we increase the exponent by 1, and we divide by that new exponent, plus c. So our answer here is minus 1, 6 times x in the minus 6 plus c. Important note here that people often get wrong that inc we want to increase minus 7 by 1, which means that we go from minus 7 to minus 6. So a common mistake will be going from minus 7 to minus 8 because 8 is bigger than 7, but there's minus signs here. We go from minus 7 to minus 6. Also, just as a reminder, we always divide by the new exponent, not the old exponent. So we are dividing by 18 here. We're not dividing by 17. One more example. This also works for fractional powers. So what's the integral of x to the 7 thirds dx? Well, add 1 on to 7 thirds, we get 10 thirds. Divide by 10 thirds plus c. We can rearrange this 3 tenths x to the 10 thirds. So the only, the only n that this does not work for is n is equal to minus 1. So let's see that. If we try to say what's x to the minus 1 dx, well, we go x to the minus 1 plus 1 divide by minus 1 plus 1 plus c. And now, uh-oh, we're dividing by 0. So this is not allowed. So in the future, we'll see exactly what is the answer when we, uh, th there is a nice formula for the indefinite integral of x to the minus 1, but it does not follow the power rule. Okay, um, another Another rule that we have here is that we have linearity rules for indefinite integrals, just like we have linearity rules for our definite integrals. The indefinite integral of a function f of x plus a function g of x is simply the sum of the respective indefinite integrals. We also get the same thing if we have the, the indefinite integral of f minus g. And also, if we have a constant c here, we can effectively move the constant c outside of our integral. So as an example of using this, we're able to do calculations like what is the integral of 3x to the 4th minus 5x to the 2 thirds plus x to the minus 3 dx. So what these rules effectively allow us to do is to integrate, but as a quote goes, term by term. That's the phrase that we'd use here. So instead of doing all this at once, we first look at the first term, and we can move out a factor of 3 times the integral of x to the 4th is x to the 5th, but we have to divide by 5. Now we have minus 5 times the indefinite integral of x to the 2 thirds, so add 1 to 2 thirds when we get 5 thirds. We have to divide by 5 thirds. And then plus, so minus 3 plus 1 gives us minus 2. And we divide by minus 2. And then don't forget our constant. By the way, you might think that we need a constant for each one of these terms. As it turns out, we have multiple constants. We can just combine it into one single constant. So we just leave it like this. So simplifying this, we end up with 3 fifths x to the fifth minus that 5 and that 5 cancels, 3x to the 5 thirds minus 1 half x to the minus 2 plus c. And you can check for yourself that if you take the derivative of this, the derivative of this term gives you 3x to the fourth, the derivative of this term gives you minus 5x to the 2 thirds, the derivative of this term gives you x to the minus 3, and the derivative of our constant is 0. Okay, so at this point, let's wrap up this video, and here is our first pre-class problem. So I want you to, I want you to evaluate this integral.